Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Under the Fig Tree. I'm Troy. And I'm Bruce. And we are so grateful that you are here with us today. We have a very fascinating topic today. Uh, just so you know, we have put out some feelers um, to different people, uh, asking them, would they like to hear us talk about certain things? Which I thought some of the response is actually pretty cool. And so this particular topic came from one of the people that sent us something back, and we thought it was so pertinent we'd jump on it early. So we are going to discuss what the will of God is. And I think this is going to be really, really cool, really beneficial, a lot more simple than people would probably think. Would you say that? That'd be pretty accurate? Sure. So let's dive right into it. What is the will of God? You look at God's sovereign plan, his sovereign plan uh, from the beginning uh, for all of mankind in a nutshell, that is going to give you the will of God. What is his plan? Yeah. Um, you, you and I were discussing this before, so I'll go ahead and throw this out here. Sure. Just get the controversy out the way. <laughs> so the question is, is God's will always accomplished? Mm. And it's a good question. It's a great question. And I know, I know personally a lot of people who, I know how they would answer that question, but I'm interested in hearing your answer. What do you think? What I see biblically is God's will always accomplished. I would say on the grand scale, the grand scheme, in the end all be all, yes. For all of mankind, yes. Right. Wholesale, right? Right, right. Sure. But on an individual basis, not so much. Not so much. Now, I know that's controversial. What do you mean God's will is not accomplished in my life? Well, we have to look at it biblically. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us it's not the will of the Father that any should perish, right. but that all come to repentance. Right. And we know everybody's not coming to repentance. So we understand that our choice, personal choice, in our personal lives has a lot to do with whether God's will for our personal lives is accomplished. Absolutely. 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 And, and that's my assessment as well, just, just to put it out there, um, because, be, because the, f the moment that God gave humankind the ability to make their own choices, then he knew that the thing that he may have had or has in his heart concerning every single one of us may or may not come to pass. Right. Because... The same one that has a will for our life. I know the plans, right? Most people, most believers, are, I know the plans that, that uh, I have for you, the plans of good and not evil that I might bring you to my expected end. But then he does this crazy thing by giving us <laughs> the ability to choose. The free will thing comes in, right? The free will thing comes in. So I think you're absolutely right. I think you're right on it. We have examples of where God wanted a particular thing Sure. And the thing did not happen because human beings made different choices. And I think that's important to point out because I, I think one thing I do wholeheartedly believe that God wants us to do is to be accountable. Yes. For our own choices, for our own actions. If not for that, you have to answer the question, why will we be judged in the end according to our deeds? Yes. If he doesn't want us to be accountable for our actions. Sure. And the reason I say that is because if we say that it's just his will being accomplished in our lives, that would absolve you of your choice. Right. God meant for this to happen. God right. wanted this to happen. And, and it even go further. Okay. Just, mm -hmm. just further. It is not the will of God uh, for these school shootings to happen. Right. But if you believe that even on a personal level that the, the you know, God's will is always accomplished outside of our own choice on a personal level, mm -hmm. then you would have to say that God causes that to happen and right. he doesn't. And he does not. So I think we, we, you know, getting the controversy out the way early. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some things to think about, you know, as we start to plow through right. and, and really, you know, dig through a little bit and talk about God's will. Sure. Biblically. So sure. I know Absolutely. you had a couple of things you wanted to bring up. Well, the, when when we decided to tackle this particular subject, I just we do what we do. I went to the Word of God, 
and and just began to look at different different scriptures. John six forty, right? And this is the will of Him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. I just began, Troy, to look at different things that have been said about the will of God, right? Right, right. And it's so interesting because there's there's so many scriptures that, that talk about in, like 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. right. For me, it, it I, as I began to go through these different verses, it was almost like I began to see that began to categorize in my mind, right, all of these different things that I knew were being said. Here's another one: First Thessalonians four three, for this is the will of God. What your sanctification? Wow. Yeah. So you that know what I'm saying? Be set apart. That you be set apart, right? Oh, that's and, tough and to that talk you about. Abst- oh, well, listen. Today, that's says, tough to talk about. It says, and that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Oh, that's tough to talk about today. So as we begin to dissect what is the will of God, man, as I said, as I begin to go through the scriptures, oh, man, you begin to see, well, it's his will that we would live and not die. Yep. Because hell wasn't designed for, for us. It wasn't. It's his will that we live a sanctified life. You know what I'm saying? You be, I begin to see just the really practical, everyday understanding of what the will of God is. I think one of the things, because I talk to a lot of people, Troy, and I know you do, we, we counsel a lot of people. Yeah. And a lot of, the, a lot of the questions I get, really, they're around, what is God's will for me? Yeah. You I know? get that a lot. I get that a lot. Now, they'll use different terms like, I need wisdom and direction. Sure. But w- when I hear that, in my heart, in my mind, I, it the scramble, right? And it comes out, they need to know God's will. Exactly. And so then I begin to answer in relation to, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you, right? I, my answers yeah. start taking on that kind of kind of sound right because you i think a lot of times people are looking for this if i can say it like this this magic bullet correct they, they want this aha kind of answer <laughs> right and you, you can't you can't give yourself revelation no <laughs> You no, you, know, can't. You, you you can't just conjure up revelation so you have to go back to the source correct and say god what is your will for my life I had somebody just a couple of days ago prior to this time that we're recording right now, and, and they were really struggling to understand. And I said, well, I, they were saying, I feel this way. I feel like something, and I feel, and I feel, and I feel, and what do I do? I said, I said, well, don't do anything. Keep doing what you've been doing. Right. Because the same God that you believe is, is indicating something to you is the same God who will make it clear sure. to you. So so don't get a don't get anxious for it. Just keep doing what you've been doing and if the thing is from the Lord, then he will come back and let you know, okay, this is what. And so it, sometimes you got to break it down and make it extraordinarily practical for people. Mm-hmm. Don't overthink it, right? Don't overthink the will of God. Whatsoever is good, whatsoever is kind, whatsoever is think on these things. That's what right. the Bible says. He didn't make it difficult. He made it extraordinarily simple. He did, and I'm I'm grateful to him for that. And I think sometimes what we have to do as people is slow down, right? Exactly. We start to slow down and really press into God. Exactly. Right? We have biblical examples where people were doing one thing, God shows up, right? Mm-hmm. And and then he pulls them off. Here's a great example. Come with me and I'll make you fishers of men, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So what was the will of God for, for those guys? To follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. And and so they did. Yeah. It's like it's really weird how it's written. You know what I mean? You, yeah. You're doing your thing, and then Jesus just shows up and says, hey, follow me. Hey, follow me. I got a different plan for you. Sure. I think sometimes we might read that and say, hey, that happened for them. Will it happen for me, you know, that way? Well, one of the things is if you just slow down. Yeah. I think if you just slow down, sure, eliminate a lot of the noise. Eliminate the noise that you have, you know, going on the pressures and all that kind of stuff. 
Eliminate all that kind of stuff. And, it's, and it is doable to eliminate that. It is very doable. I like to say it like this. You need to get above the noise. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. And, and one of the ways that you get above the noise is you worship. Yes, sir. The other way you get above the noise, and I know, I know that this may also be controversial. I'm pulling from, um, from Jude. Jude says, building up myself on my most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost in or the in Holy the Ghost. Holy Spirit That's or right. in tongues, whatever your vernacular is in that regard. I know that there may be listeners who may not necessarily believe in in praying in the Spirit or, or speaking in tongues, but it's in there. I, I, I'm not making it up. And, and so I can only give what works for me based on the Word of God. Correct. So I do it, and all of a sudden, I find myself above the noise. Correct. And I do it, and I find that clarity comes so once again a lot of times i tell people hey look same thing you just said troy get get quiet yeah get quiet quiet your life right for a moment and then begin the worship and it's amazing how all of a sudden clarity comes and all of a sudden everything crystallizes and then that thing you were struggling with you're no longer struggling with it doesn't change God. It doesn't change God. It changes us. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And I love that about worship. I, I love to add that in. God can't become any more God. He can't become he any less God. So the worship doesn't change God. No. It changes us. It, it changes, changes us. our perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, according to the word of God, we're seated in heavenly places with and by Christ Jesus right now. Correct. If that doesn't become reality, then you struggle. And that's just the truth of it. I agree. If uh, that truth doesn't become a reality that I can be here on this microphone right now with you. Mm -hmm. And at the same time in my heart, while I'm talking to you right now, those of you who are listening, I'm looking at my friend Troy as, as we're talking on the microphone. But at the same time, this is going to sound so weird and I'm glad it's going to sound weird. <laughs> at the same time, I have a visual of being seated at the right hand of the Father inside of Jesus Christ. Why? Because that's what the Bible says. It's a reality. It's a reality to me now. And that has to become a reality to people. And when that becomes a reality, you, you, I, I think, folks, the word that keeps coming to mind for the past couple of days is crystallize. All mm. of a sudden, things crystallize. Yeah. And you see it clearly. Yeah. And that's important for the believer, man. I think you're absolutely correct. Understanding our position, understanding where God has placed us. Yeah. I think once we get out of position, things kind of get a little haywire for us, which happens to us all the time. All the time. And, and, and for the believer, the young believer specifically, uh, that may be listening to this podcast, it happens to all of us from yep. time to time. Yep. Sometimes life tends to get the best of us or a moment or two until we quiet ourselves and say, you know what? This is not God's will for me to experience defeat in this life. That's exactly right. Especially when he's already overcome the world. Yes. So why am I experiencing defeat? And I know that's not the will of God. Yes. And I need to quiet myself. Yes. And, and press in and see, okay, God, where are the holes? Where, where have I left a crack in the wall? Yeah. Where are the breaches? Exactly. And then uh, I believe that in that moment that God begins to, uh, open the picture for you yeah. so that you can see, okay, you, you opened a door here, you yeah. have a crack in the wall here. Right. What people have to understand, especially when we start looking at this book, these cities had these walls. Okay, yes. I'm going to go on my little side rant for a second. <laughs> go for it. These cities had these walls. And if you remember when Nehemiah had to rebuild the wall, one of the issues was when they got back to Jerusalem, there were no walls, so the people still felt vulnerable. Yes. Anybody can come back in here. Because we have no protection. Right. Anything can happen. And it was a problem when they went back because if a, if a city had walls, it was protected. Yes. And if a city didn't have walls, anything could get in there. Right? So you have the physical wall in the Old Testament right. that protected the city. 
But it, what it is is a representation of what we experience now, what the physical wall was in the Old Testament to a city. Yeah. Ministry is for the believer now. Sure. Right? Sure. So when you have good ministry, which includes your prayer life and includes your worship time, it includes all that kind of stuff, yeah. not just people ministering to you, but allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to you as well. Sure. And you in turn ministering to other people. That's what builds the wall around you. Sure. And when you don't have good ministry like that, anything can climb in. Yeah. And yeah. then that's what we what we're facing at the time. Yeah. And it's just not God's will for you to experience defeat. It's not his will for people to be able to tear down your walls and all yeah. this kind of stuff. You're supposed to be fortified. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that's one thing to look at too. When we're looking at the will of God, sometimes people are like, why am I experiencing defeat? Why is yeah. this happening? This must be God's will. It's not God's will for you to be sick. That's right. It's not his will for you to be destitute and broken. That's right. He came here to heal you from all that. Yes. Now, I'm not going all the way out in the far end and, and saying everybody's supposed to be a billionaire and, and own your own island. You know what I mean? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going that far because that's, you know, a little bit, it's excessive. You it's, know what I mean? Yeah, no, sure. It's a bit excessive. Sure, but, sure. But it's not God's will for you to be just broken down and physically broken and emotionally broken and spiritually broken. It's not his will for that to happen. That's right. Not provided for, yeah. you know? Yeah. To not be provided for. Correct. I think that's a good way to say it because I, you're absolutely right. Everybody's not going to be a millionaire or billionaire or whatever, right? No. But have you learned to allow him to provide for you while you stay in this place of peace? Yeah. That's relationship, man. Correct. Well, um, one of the things that I'd like to add to add to what you just said about being fortified Here's another aspect I think I hope will 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 help mm -hmm. uh, our listeners. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think the body of Christ really needs to come back to when you talk about ministry is learning how to minister to him. There's an Old Testament scripture that says that he inhabits the praises of his people. I think it's in Psalms. It's in Psalms. Yeah. And so for me, that's that's a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. The prayer, the worship, right? Make sure that you're not just looking at it from the standpoint of what it does for you. Correct. But actually engaging him. Absolutely. You know, absolutely engaging him and ministering to him. Because when you set your heart to minister to him, I can remember one day, Troy, I just really, I, I got up to go to work and I felt like the Lord wanted me to hang out with them for the day. And I just felt it so strongly. God, what, 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 what is this? What am I, what am I sensing? What am I feeling? And I went ahead and just, I took the day off and I was grateful that I had the opportunity, you know, at that time to be able to just call and say, Hey, you know, I need to take today off. I was grateful for that. Right. It wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. but being able to just spend that time with him. I didn't ask for anything. Yeah. I just walked around the house and I would, every now and then I'd say, God, I worship you. I worship you. I magnify you. G give me your heart. What, what, what's, so much. what's on your heart, Lord? I'm not here to ask you. And I think that's important, man, for our listeners, for, for believers in general, don't just look at it because there is such a, oh my goodness, what word can I use? There is such a me mentality running rampant in the body of Christ today that even when I think I'm interacting with God, I'm interacting with God from a me perspective, not a him perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes all the difference when you set your heart that I'm going to really, truly worship him. I'm not asking for anything in this moment, in this session, that I'm, I'm going to worship him. And I'm telling you guys, man, God honors it yeah. and acknowledges it. And all of a sudden, your perspective changes, and now you can see things that maybe you couldn't see before. Absolutely. So let's look at that biblically, right? Mm -hmm. You had 12 tribes that went into the promised land. Right. 11 of those tribes were given land. One tribe was not given land. That's right. That was the tribe of Levi. And what was their job? Their job was to minister to the Lord. Continually. 
That was their job, was to yep. minister to the Lord, like you said, continually. Yep. And what was the result of that job? He said this. He said, I will be your portion. Yep. Reuben exactly got a portion right. of land. Judah got a portion of land. Sure. And Simeon got a portion of land it, all the way down the line right. for 11 tribes. And you look at it, and you're like, well, why didn't Levi get any land? But look, he said, I'm going to be your portion. He said, I'll be your portion. Their job was to minister to the Lord, and then in turn, what did the Lord give them? He gave them himself. Yep. And I think that's awesome when you that's, start to look at that. That's incredibly awesome. I think it gives us a picture. Look, part of the will, right, yeah. is for us to completely give ourselves over to him. Yeah. And in turn, he can completely give himself over to you. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Now we're talking. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I mean, be, be, I, I just, as you were saying that I heard Jesus say, not my will, but your will be done father. Yeah. Yes. I have a will. Mm -hmm. And if it was left up to me, I, I don't, I would not go this route to accomplish what you want to accomplish. But you know what? I, I'm going to lay down my will at your feet. And I'm going to make your will my will. Yeah. See, that's that. Jesus is our example in all yeah. things godly, right? Yeah. So now we have a picture of how to live out the will of God. And it really is about laying down our will and taking up his will. Yeah. And I think, you know, looking at the life of Jesus, Jesus made a statement I think has always been fascinating to me when he said, my meat. Is do is to, it is to do, do the will of the one that sent me. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, the 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 food, the meat. Yeah, was satisfaction for you. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yes. And he said, "Look, you paraphrasing this. You guys get your satisfaction through all this kind of stuff. Yes. But the way my soul is satisfied. Yes. Is by doing the will of the one that sent me. Yeah. yeah. That's where I get my satisfaction yeah. from. Yeah. And, and from nowhere else. Our flesh is hostile towards God, so there's no way that your flesh is going to be satisfied. No by doing the will of God. But he said, look, my soul is satisfied. Yeah. That's what he's saying. My soul gets its gratification. My yeah. soul gets its satisfaction from doing the will of the one that sent me. Yeah. And this was his I, life. I, I get full off of. Yeah, I love it. I get full off of. do. And you're talking uh, uh, John 6. I think it's John. Yeah. Yeah. For, for, for the listeners, that's John 6, 38, 38, 39, 40, something like that. Matter of fact, here it is. For I have come down from heaven, mm -hmm. not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. Yeah. That's awesome, man. For this is the will of my father, that everyone who looks on the son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up. On the last day. That's incredible. You got to love that. That's incredible, man. Not to do my own will. No. So that speaks to what you were saying before. He laid that to the side. He laid that to the wow. side. You know what's fascinating to me about that, Troy? Exactly. Jesus had his own will. Yeah. A lot of people won't think of that. You know? <laughs> oh, gee. Jesus had his own will. So now, basically this what you're saying is blasphemous. He didn't, he didn't have to die on the cross is he, what you're saying. He did not. He did not. <laughs> He had to choose. He had to choose. This is why he's our example. Because mm -hmm. he shows us, you know, we we both come out of some different circles where yeah. the prophets like to talk about dying. You know, you got to die, you got to <laughs> die, you got to die, you got to die. Yeah. But now Jesus is showing us really, truly how to die. Yes. It's, it's, it's not don't eat red meat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, that's conviction. If you choose to eat something or not eat something based on your relationship with God, that's conviction, yeah. right? But true dying to self has to do with the will. Yeah, it does. So when we talk about dying to self, we're talking about the will, not not necessarily. Now, abstaining from something might be the, the fruit of that, you choosing to let his will be your will, right? But you can't you can't die to self without choosing to lay down your will and say, just like Jesus said, Father, not my will, your will be done. Yeah. And some people will say, Troy, well, how do you know the will of God? How, how do you know? How do you know the will of God? Well, there's a great way. When we get to Romans, 
chapter 12. Oh, I brought it in too early, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> we can get on it. We can get on it. Or you know what? We'll get, we can get back to that. Okay. Yeah, let's come back around to that. Let's look at this. Okay. Because I, I like where, where you're talking about when we're talking about this will. There's a parallel, and I teach this parallel. Just looking at the two pictures, these shadows, right? Yeah. You have an Old Testament shadow. You have a New Testament reality, right? right? So you have the first Adam, right? Yes. And the first Adam decides to exercise his will over that of the father. The father's, yeah. And when he promoted his own will over the father's will, watch what happened. Sin and death entered into the, the world, right? Right. Then you flash forward several thousand years, and you have the last Adam, which is Jesus, who submits his will to the father. So he doesn't promote his own will over the father. Right. And in that submission of his will to the father, now he's placed in the position to bring life. Yeah. One brought death, the other brought life. We, we, we read about that in passages too. Now, sure. here's the interesting thing. Adam was never meant to die, but God said the day that you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. Yes. Adam ate the fruit and he didn't die physically immediately. Right. 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 But did he die? Absolutely. He died Absolutely. spiritually yeah. right then. He was separated right then. Yes. The only way Adam could physically die in the world was he had to spiritually die first. Yes. That's the only way he could physically die That's because exactly he was never right. meant to die. That's exactly right. So when you go back to several thousand years forward and we look at Jesus, mm -hmm. who incidentally is in a garden too. Yeah. Right. 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 He's in the garden. You have one Adam in the garden. Yeah. The first Adam. You have the last Adam in the garden. And both of them are dealing with the will. Jesus literally died in the garden. He physically died on the cross. But where he died first was in the garden when he said, not my will. That's right. But you, he said, if there's any other way right. that we can do this. Yes. And then he said, nevertheless, not my will. Yes. Once he laid down his will, right. that was the act of him yes. dying. He died to himself. Yes. And he, he continued in the will of God. Yes. You know, for, he continued sure. in that. Sure. Now that's what allowed him to die physically. How do you know that? Well, think about it. All through his ministry, people got upset with him. Remember, they tried to stone him. Yep, and he just passed and, through the and crowd. He walked through the crowd. They had him backed up to a cliff. He walked they, through the crowd. They couldn't do anything with him. Right. They wanted to do stuff. With, they couldn't do anything with him. But now look at it. As soon as he submits his will, yeah, to God's will, what's the next thing that happened? Now the soldiers come and they can grab him. Yeah, they, they can, can touch him. They can pull on him. They can beat on him. They couldn't do any of that stuff before because he wasn't authorized to die. That's right. Physically. Right. But he had to die spiritually first. So yes. what am I saying? What I'm saying is simply this. The act of us dying spiritually, right? Yeah. Cutting off our own will. Yeah. Being the antithesis to the first ahead of him. Yeah. Is our first step to eternal life. Yeah. That's good. Which is what God wants for us anyway. That's I good. think you read that passage. Yeah. That's what he, turning to Jesus so that we can have that eternal life. But how do we do that? Mm. I I know I'm going on a rant here. You know <laughs> it's I mean? okay. It's a good one. But here, here, here's something, okay? And I, I want the listeners to understand this. Please understand this. I don't care what it is that you're struggling with. If you're not born again, uh, if you have not come to Jesus, you know, if you haven't submitted your life to him, it doesn't matter what your struggle is. It doesn't matter what your walk of life <laughs> is. It doesn't matter what you're practicing at the time. Come to Jesus. Come to him just like you are. I'm not going to tell you to clean up and come to him. You come to him just like you are. Now, God loves you. He wants you to be with him. He has a plan for you. He has a place for you. All you have to do is come to him, right? Now, here's the thing. Once you come to him, then there's a death that has to happen. Yes. But you don't die first to come to him. You submit your will after yes. you come to him, and he helps you with that. Right. He will never ask you to do something he hasn't done himself. That's right. And since he's already submitted his will to the Father, he showed you how to do that. He's going to help you do the same. That's right. So good. End of my rant. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good, man. Hey, that's all the time we have for today. We thank you so much for spending your time with us discussing the will of God. 
We hope that you join us as we continue this conversation under the fig tree.